If your steering suddenly feels stiff, jerky, or that warning light just came on on your car dash out of nowhere, don't ignore it. You might be dealing with electric power steering issues, and trust me, that is not something you want to ignore, and definitely not something you want to guess your way through. In this video, I'm going to break it all down for you. What electric power steering really is, what causes it to go bad, all the signs you should be looking out for to ensure proper diagnosis, how to fix it the right way, how much it'll cost you, and whether or not you can fix it yourself without getting ripped off. We're covering it all from start to finish in this video. So let's get into it. So first off, what even is electric power steering, EPS? Back in the day, most cars had hydraulic power steering, which basically used a pump driven by your engine and fluid pressure to help you turn the wheel. That's why older cars had that little whine when turning, and why you always had to check your power steering fluid. But with electric power steering, or EPS, there's no fluid at all. Instead, it uses an electric motor and a few sensors to give you that power assist when turning. No belts, no pulleys, no leaks. And honestly, that's a win in terms of maintenance. You'll find EPS in most cars made after 2010. Toyota, Ford, Honda, you name it. Some luxury brands had it even earlier. Manufacturers made the switch to electric mainly for fuel economy and reliability. One less belt on the engine means less drag and better mileage. Plus, fewer parts to wear out. So while it sounds fancy, it's just a smarter way to help you steer without the mess of old school systems. How does electric power steering actually work? Now here's how it works. When you turn your steering wheel, sensors detect how much force you're applying and what direction you're turning. That info gets sent to a little computer, which we call it the EPS control module. Based on what you're doing, that computer tells the electric motor to either help you out a lot or just a little. Like if you're parking and turning hard at low speed, it gives you full assist. But if you're doing 70 on the highway, it backs off and gives you a firmer feel so you're not oversteering. There's no fluid, no pressure pump, just electronics, sensors, and a motor doing the job. And since there's no power steering fluid to check, a lot of folks assume it can't fail, but that's just not the case. It can and does go bad. The main components to remember here are torque sensor, measures how hard you're turning the wheel. Steering angle sensor, tracks the actual position of the wheel. Electric motor, gives you the assist. EPS control module, the brain of the operation, it's all tied into the car's computer system. So when one of those pieces acts up, and you will feel it right away. What are the most common electric power steering symptoms? All right, let's talk symptoms. First big one, the steering gets stiff, like way stiffer than usual. You turn the wheel and it feels like the assist just quit on you, especially during low speed turns or parking. Sometimes it'll work on and off. One minute you're fine, next minute it's like you're arm wrestling your steering wheel. That's usually a sign of something going bad internally, like a motor glitch or voltage issue. Then there's the lovely power steering warning light. That little steering wheel icon pops up on your dash. That's your car screaming, hey, something's not right here. You might also notice the steering feels jerky, like it's not smooth. That usually points to sensor issues or motor hiccups. And if you hear clicking, whining, or grinding when turning, especially at low speeds, yeah, don't ignore that. It could be the motor struggling or internal damage. Some cars even experience battery drain or alternator stress if the EPS is pulling too much power. That's rare, but I've seen it, especially in cold weather. And in the worst case scenario, though it's not common, the steering can lock up completely. That's a full-blown emergency. Bottom line, if anything feels off with your steering, don't wait. These things can go from annoying to dangerous real fast. Why does electric power steering go bad? So what actually causes all these headaches? One of the main reasons for this is a bad steering angle sensor or torque sensor. If the computer gets the wrong info, it'll send the wrong signal or no signal at all to the motor. Sometimes it's just a faulty electric motor. Like any motor, it can wear out, overheat, or short internally. Wiring issues are another big one, especially if road got under the hood or moisture caused corrosion in the connector. A loose ground or broken wire can kill the whole system. Don't forget the fuses and relays. A blown EPS fuse or bad relay can cut power to the motor and boom, no assist. I've also seen cases where the control module just freaks out. It could be a glitch, water damage, or even a bad update from the dealership. Yes, one more you might not think of. Low battery voltage. These systems need clean, consistent power. If your battery or alternator is weak, EPS won't work right, especially in cold starts. Water is the silent killer here. Water intrusion from deep puddles, floods, or even a sloppy car wash can ruin connectors, short out modules, and corrode terminals. And of course, if the car was ever in a crash, the EPS system could have taken a hit, especially if the steering rack or column got tweaked during repair. How can you tell if your electric power steering is failing? Your car's not going to just whisper, hey, I've got EPS problems, but it will throw signs if you're paying attention. The first big clue, steering starts feeling heavier, especially at low speeds like when you're pulling into a parking spot. That's a sign the motor isn't giving you the assist it should. At higher speeds, the steering might still feel okay because you don't need as much assistance, but it could feel weirdly tight or not return to center properly after a turn. That's your clue that something's still off. Now, imagine your mid-turn, maybe pulling out of a driveway and suddenly the wheel gets stiff halfway through. That's the EPS cutting out mid-turn, and it's not 
not only scary, it's dangerous. That's how a lot of people end up bumping curbs or overcorrecting. Also, pay attention to what happens right after you start the car. If the steering assist kicks in late or the EPS warning light comes on then goes off, you're on borrowed time. That system's trying to tell you it's struggling to keep up. Listen for weird noises too. Clicking, grinding, or faint whirring under the dash when you turn the wheel. That could mean the motor's wearing out or sensors are getting twitchy. And if you see a message like steering assist reduced or anything along those lines, don't brush it off. That's not just a suggestion. It means the system isn't working right and you could lose steering help at any moment. Bottom line, if it feels weird, stiff, or delayed, or if you see a light, that's the car screaming for help. Don't wait till you're stuck in the middle of traffic with no steering assist. Can you still drive the car if the EPS is acting up? Short answer, sometimes, but it depends on how bad it is. If the system goes down completely, the car can still steer, but it'll feel like wrestling a 90s pickup with no power steering. You'll need serious arm strength, especially at low speeds or when trying to park. At highway speeds, it won't feel as tough, but it's still not how the car was designed to operate. So yeah, the wheels still turn, but manual steering is no joke if you're not used to it. And let's be real, if you're in a tight spot or need to react fast, having no assist is a safety risk. If your car suddenly starts feeling heavy or twitchy and you get a warning light, pull over safely and turn the engine off and then back on. Sometimes it'll reset temporarily, but don't make that your long-term plan. When is it okay to drive to the shop? If you still have partial assist and you're not on the freeway, it's probably safe to limp to a mechanic. Just go slow and take it easy. But if the steering locks up, get stiff out of nowhere, or you hear any loud clicking while turning, park it and call for help. Better to pay for a tow than cause an accident or damage something worse. How do you diagnose electric power steering issues? Start with the basics. Check the battery voltage. If it's dipping below 12.4 volts, your EPS might not get enough juice. Then check the alternator output. That's another common cause. Next up, fuses and relays. These are cheap and easy to test or swap. I've seen plenty of cars towed in for steering failure that just needed a fuse. Then grab an OBD2 scanner that can read EPS codes. Not all of them can. You're looking for codes like C1A00, Torque Sensor Fault C1, A4, 1, EPS Control Module Malfunction, 1B00, Motor Circuit Issue, U1000, lost communication, usually wiring or module related. No codes? Doesn't mean you're in the clear, you still want to do a visual inspection under the hood. Look for loose connectors on the steering column, chewed or cracked wires water damage, or corroded terminals. If you've got everything hooked up and powered right, and you're still having problems, it's time for a road test. See how the car behaves at different speeds, sharp turns, cold starts, and all that. Some cars also have a built-in EPS reset procedure, turning the wheel lock to lock, or using a scan tool to recalibrate the steering angle sensor. Doesn't work on every model, but worth a try before you start replacing stuff. Fixes that actually work and which ones don't. Sometimes a simple reset is all it takes. Disconnect the battery for 15 minutes, reconnect, and try a steering wheel calibration. Works great on some Nissans and Toyotas. Sensor replacements are another common fix. The torque sensor or angle sensor can go bad and mess with your assist. Replacing one usually runs a couple of hundred bucks. If the electric motor is failing, making noise, or not responding, that'll need to be swapped. This is a bigger job but very fixable. Got a wiring issue or corrosion? Clean the contacts, replace damaged wires, and reseal connectors with dielectric grease. A faulty EPS module might need replacing or reprogramming. That part controls all the logic, so if it's glitching, it can cause random failures or total loss of assist. On some cars, especially GM or Ford, a software update at the dealer can fix buggy behavior. That's usually cheaper than a full part replacement. Worst case scenario? The whole steering column or rack needs replacing. That's rare, but if the motor and sensors are all built in and nothing else fixes it, you're looking at $1,500 or more. Don't let anyone talk you into replacing everything if one cheap part could solve the issue. Always test first. A lot of shops jump straight to replacing the rack, and that ain't cheap or always necessary. How much is this going to cost me? Now to the part nobody likes, the bill. Let's break it down. Diagnostics at most shops will cost you anywhere from $50 to $150, depending on the tools and time involved. Sensor replacements, torque or angle, usually fall between $150 to $400 parts and labor. A new EPS motor can run $300 to $800 depending on your vehicle. If you need the full steering rack or column replaced, you're looking at $1,000 to $2,500 or more, especially on luxury vehicles or trucks. Labor rates vary by region, but most shops charge $100 to $180 per hour. 
Used or refurbished parts can save you some money, but only if they're tested and guaranteed. Don't risk junkyard EPS modules unless you really know what you're doing. Dealerships? Yeah, they'll charge more, especially for programming. But you might get warranty coverage if your car's still under the powertrain. Or electric systems warranty. And there you have it. And if you've got a weird EPS problem I didn't cover, drop it in the comments. Subscribe for more car fixes, and I'll catch you in the next video.